Monday. Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. Our special Halloween edition. Oh yeah. As you can see, we're ready for Christmas. This is it. I mean, this is our Christmas decorations. Right. So, welcome. Joining us today, we have Penelope Pumpkin. Penelope Pumpkin. We right recognized here. her from last week. She has in all her glory. We have Pepper here. Pepper is actually really in a good mood today. <laughs> she wants to go on camera from the get go. Actually, Pepper, you're my right. honey. Let me get the comments set up. Yes. Behind us here He's on going, our big TV. Yes, yeah, since we are in our little living room area, we get to put our comments on our TV. So that's what he's going to go ahead and do. Put the comments on there so we can actually see what you're saying because you're so far away on my phone. But uh, yeah. So welcome to Monday Fun Day. We are going to talk about our amazing experience over at Hollow Scream at Bush Gardens. It was amazing. In Tampa. Oh my goodness. I can't even tell you. I, I mean, we have so much to say. So much to say. A lot to talk about. Yes, absolutely. Hello, everyone. Lynn and Norma and, uh, sorry, he's like scrolling up. He's scrolling up the, the so comments. So it's like Lynn, uh, Cassie, Hello. Uh, Norma, yes, Michelle. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Banana Peel. I love that name. Hello, hello. Just, you go ahead and start talking because I'm going to okay. move this light because I can see it's okay. a little bright. A little bright so, there. holds little, on. A little harsh lighting. I'll tell you if it's good or not. Make sure Penelope, she, she wants to obviously be in good light. So, yes, we did Hollow Scream last night. It was the last night of the event. And I'm telling you what, it was the perfect weather. We're going to go into it. I want everyone to kind of have time to join us here on the live chat, even though you can always rewatch this. But, um... Yeah, we are going to talk about Hollow Scream. Oh, the hell. It was our fourth time. It's still, it's fine. <laughs> At least we're not like, you can see us. We're not. Last week I was bleached out. I know. I hello, so... Beverly from Wales. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, wait, so the camera's like Parker. in. I can't see the comments as well this week. But... Oh, no. Let's just scoot over to that. Oh, this thing. is perfect. Hello. Uh, I feel like I'm so far. Pepper's here as well. Our Pepper. dog, Pepper. She's, She's just right laying here. down. She's, She's relaxing. Just... We're going to let her do that. <laughs> so she won't cry like she, she doesn't cry last week. Uh, but yes, so I know the decorations. We said, you know, it's Halloween. It's our Halloween episode of Monday Fun Day. Because Halloween is tomorrow night. Do you have a name for this thing? I don't. I want to call him Jack. Jack the Skeleton Head. Oh, but I don't know. It could uh, be either way. Oh, yes, yeah, so a pumpkin. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, I'm yes. looking at the computer. Wait, our pumpkin, though, Penelope, she is um, slowly dying. Slowly dying, poor thing. That's why we don't, that's why we didn't turn her on tonight. Because uh, if we put any kind of flame in her, I'm afraid she might just go. Well, I mean, it's not that tomorrow night we'll have her going, but uh, tonight we are going to just leave her off, <laughs> let her rest. Uh, but we we do have a yeah have her aging. But tomorrow's Halloween, yes. so perfect Tom timing. I know tomorrow's Halloween, it's crazy. so let's go ahead and dive right into it. We went to Hollow Scream in Bush Gardens, Tampa. Oh my goodness, it was great, unreal, unreal. We went yesterday. Last night was the very last night for Hollow Scream for the event, and I, ooh, ooh, I that can't begin to tell you, it was well, so good. So backstory, we've been before, mm -hmm. um, we have been, I think this was our third time going, mm -hmm. fourth mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. fourth time going, see some of the years, fourth time. the other years weren't as memorable, mm -hmm. uh, but it is, uh, well no, I'm just going to be honest, so, <laughs> it, it, so this year though, I mean this is something I will never forget. Uh, let's start about the weather. The weather here in Florida, if you guys are in Florida or have been paying attention to our weather, if you're not here, it's been amazing. It's been like in the 60s and 70s every it's day. It's been chilly. It's been chilly. Chilly, chilly, chilly. Uh, a nice uh, light coat. Just it feels great. It mm -hmm. feels great. I wore shorts last night. I'm still comfortable even though it was a little chilly. But I quickly just want to say hello to Beverly. This is her first time able to see us live. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Beverly. Welcome, Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Thank hello. you for the compliment. Caleb, yes, all the candies. We are going to get all the candies ready for tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll have some trick-or-treaters so we can hand out candy, but I don't know. I don't know if we will. Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, so yes. So, we've been to the event at Bush Gardens Tampa, Hollow Scream before, and this was our fourth year going, and I want to say, I'm going to put it on the record, that this year, I feel like, was phenomenal. I think out shines the four years that we have gone together. Yeah. Like, honestly, they had stepped it up. Like, their scare zones, I really enjoyed their scare zones the years past, but I feel like this year, they put so much detail in everything. I mean, everything. For me, the scare zones uh, didn't really, 
I felt like they didn't have scare zones past years. Like I, I they didn't really put a lot of effort into it. That's the feeling I got. And this year it was very like, it was detailed sets. They rolled out sets similar to like what Halloween Horror Nights does. And the, there was just, it was a lot of actors, a lot of performers. And it was just, and there was lots of good music in those areas. And it's just stuff that really, I know they did it in years past, but it just wasn't as prominent. It wasn't as memorable for me. Um, but this year it, it stuck. I mean, they had like, uh, Class Deceased, oh, they had the Playground so Return, good. the Playground's a classic, mm -hmm. they had the Circus um, themed one, which I don't oh, know actually. Oh, the Circus, here, we, have the oh, we have the names right here. We have the maps. We have the maps, which I find sheet, really sheets. cool. Look how they, they folded them like this. And we'll so it. new for this year, they had Wasteland, and I think also Carney Camp was new. Um, if it wasn't new, at least, again, this year, I think they put a lot more into it than um, previous years. And um, Undead Arena Live. Yes, that that's a new house. house. And also really the good. Demented Dimensions. Those were all new. We'll get into the houses yeah. right now. Let's just start with the Scare Zones. Yeah. So yeah. the Scare Zones, um, you walk through the Circus one, and they have a uh, person on like the uh, bungee, oh. the bungee thing, and that really loud sound effect. They had a guy with a megaphone, and no. just... It's really different. It's the the park itself is designed kind of similar to Islands of Adventure, where it the walkways are narrow, and so of course at Halloween Horror Nights, we we're saying this last night. Halloween Horror Nights, you have the streets in New York, you have Hollywood Boulevard. These are wide streets. There's a lot of room to kind of move around if you don't want to be near a scare performer. Obviously, they can't hire that many. You know, they'll always be in every inch or covering every inch. But Bush Gardens, it's narrow, it's intimate, and it feels like. You have you, every step you take. There's going to be a performer right there to get you, and there was. And Undertaker Punk just asked, "Do you think it's now a rival between Halloween Horror Nights over here in Orlando?" Mm -hmm. Yes. For those scares them. Yes. I will give a strong yes. Years past, I would say probably not. Yeah. But for this year, absolutely, absolutely, a hundred percent. I feel like Hollow Scream now is yeah. HHN has some rivalry going on with Hollow Scream this year, for sure. For sure. But, um, hello, this is Walt Disney World. Hello, and Rodney's <laughs> asking about the new job. Job's going great, so thank you for asking. Love the job. Yes. But, um, you know, yes, I think that Halloween, or Hollow Scream and Halloween Horror Nights, they've never really been able to, they've never been the same class or category. And for me, this year, the, the, the scare zones and the atmosphere of the park really kind of did it for me, where I feel like, I kind of almost enjoyed it more because we went to Halloween Horror Nights once this year. I enjoyed the scare zones more at Hello Scream than Halloween Horror Nights. You know, Halloween Horror Nights, I mean, it got down to science, it's great, but here it just was, for me, it was more, since it was more intimate, it did it for me. The houses though at Hello Scream still need a little work. That's that's my critique. I feel like they still need some work because the, the houses, um, Halloween Horror Nights has lots of noise, lots of music, and I think Hello Scream kind of needs that in their houses. But hello, Jenny. Welcome to the party. Hello. Welcome to the Halloween party. Uh, banana peel? Yes, but, they have chainsaws. Yeah. Banana, uh, peel. banana peel asks if they have chainsaw. Yes, they do. They have tons of chainsaws throughout their scare zones and the houses. It's absolutely insane. Um, Parker asked. Uh, Parker asked, does this mean I should plan for an extra day next year to fit in Hollow Scream? Yes. yes. Absolutely 100%. Yes, Parker. Yes. Do it. Please do it because it's just so unique. Um, I feel like Halloween Horror Nights is so like everyone goes to it, obviously, because that's the biggest Halloween event here in Orlando. It's been around longer too. And absolutely, and it definitely it's universal, so you you know what you're gonna get. I feel like with Bush Gardens Hollow Scream, I feel like it's um, more unique mm -hmm. in a way yeah. because you don't really know what you're gonna get. They always change things up. Um, even though they do have the same houses sometimes every year, but I feel like no matter, even if it's a new house or at the same house, it's always, there's always something different or there's always a new scare or, um, a new scare zone. And I just absolutely love it. And I, I can't, I can't get it. I want to know so you guys, I mean, obviously I'm going to try to read along, but I mean, comment even after the, if you're playing this back, if you're not watching this live, um, you can comment below, but I want to know, what do you think about how they have houses return? I mean, they had seven houses, four of them returned. There was only two new houses. And I think I like that. I kind of like where, I don't want it to be there for more than five years, but it's nice to see a house, you know, there for a couple or a couple or a few years because I really enjoy certain houses. 
And I would love to be able to go back and be like, hey, I can't wait for this. You know, it gives me a reason, something to look forward to, something I'm familiar with, comfortable with. Hey, I love Motel Hell. I'm gonna be able to look forward to seeing that house again. It was one of my favorite houses. Where at Halloween Horror Nights, if you have a favorite one, it's not gonna be back for next year. I mean, it's, <laughs> they change it up. So like, I would love to see Halloween with Michael Myers come back to Halloween Horror Nights, but I know they probably won't do that, but I would love to see them come bring back a house. Uh, Lauren asks, so Hollow, oh, Hollow Scream isn't as, as immersive as HHN? Um, I feel like it is. I feel like, well, this year I feel like it is. It is. I think what he's talking about is that if you go into um, a house at um, uh, Halloween Horror Nights, I'm getting both of them mixed up now. If you go into a house at Halloween Horror Nights, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get loud, loud music. You're going to get those scares that like... That put, like the, the scare actors push their boo uh, buttons in their boo holes, and you get the you know loud sounds. But I feel with Hollow Scream, complete opposite. They don't have that loud blaring music, and when you're going through, it's something as so simple as uh, it was in the new house. Uh, oh, Demented Dimensions. I Demented think. Dimensions, where they have this. Like, I would say this like six foot five big guy just standing in a room a dark no, that room was, that was i'm sorry dead arena arena dead or arena dead arena live dead arena live yeah and he was sitting he was just standing dead. in this dark room and there was this one spotlight on him and you had to walk around him and it was quiet yeah and it was that was just so i feel like more it was more scarier than halloween horror nights it was scarier it, it just because it's like it was more realistic i guess yeah if that makes sense I'm sorry, hold on yeah, one second. Ahead. I gotta tend to Pepper. Pepper wants to go outside on the patio, so. Um, I think with the houses at Hallow Scream, it, it is very different. The scares, they literally just have people dressed in all black just to come up to your ear and to go ahead and, and scream or say something. Um, a lot of them have noise makers and they just hit a, a wall really loud. It's very basic scares, but I mean that you know in a good way where it's just I mean, it doesn't take much to get scared by something. You're kind of in, already psyching yourself up when you walk into a haunted house. So it's, uh, you don't have to do much. They don't have to do much. Yeah. Um, oh, Undertaker Punk said Zombie Mortuary was his favorite in 2011. I love. That loved, was your favorite, too. I love Zombie. Because, I mean, a, a, a cemetery, not cemetery, but um, a morgue alone is just scary. And to think that there's zombies in it and the way, I, coffins are just creepy. I hate coffins. Can't so. Tell. So Can't walking die. through and seeing these coffins, there's a coffin in the the dead water bayou, I think. Yes, it's I was just gonna yeah, get to that. Kind of, you can walk underneath <laughs> it. So it's interesting. Yes, the Walt Disney World fan. They had the dead water bayou, which was so creepy. Oh, oh, oh. So this really, I mean, yeah. We, occasionally, when we're out in the parks, sometimes people will come up to us and be like, "Hey, I know I watch your vlogs, or I I watched E Ticket, or what what have you." But mm -hmm. last night. It happened so often, and what was really scary is that they, obviously, they knew our names, right. so they would come up and be like, Patrick, or Gavin, and- You're gonna die, Patrick, like he said I that. was literally, I almost started crying. I got so scared. It, it, it happened cool. in the scare zones, it happened in the houses. I, I think that made it even more realistic. So obviously you guys probably won't have that experience unless you, you know, you're out really out there on social media, but we, you know, it comes to the territory. So, um, going to a theme park and then having people that are interested in theme parks watching us and seeing us. So, uh, that was kind of cool, but it is, it adds a different element to it. Uh, Mrs. Walt Disney World fan. That's a really good question. Um, doesn't HHN rush the guests through the houses and, uh, does hollow scream? Well, I've noticed that he actually is the one that brought it up last yeah. night. Hollow Scream, they pulse their line, which is like they'll put in maybe six or seven guests and then cut the line for like a couple minutes and then another, let, allow another six or seven, like a handful of guests in. So I think that just makes it even more scarier because you're not getting uh, what we like to call it conga lined yeah. through the house where it's just a person after person, you know. It's a crazy thing. But conga lines are not always bad. A lot of people will complain that uh, that don't that aren't too familiar with the design and uh, how they construct these houses at Halloween Horror Nights. A lot of people go, oh, it's conga lines, so I'm watching all these people in front of me get the scares, I'm not getting the scare, you know? But the thing is, Halloween Horror Nights knows that they're gonna have to do conga lines because of the capacity of all the people that come to this event. There's a lot more than people going to Halloween Scream. And so these houses are built and designed with the conga line um, effect like they're they build them 
knowing that people are going to go through them like that. So these boo holes and these these tricks and things that you see and effects are built where if you're in a conga line, you should still be getting scared. I still get scared, even though we conga line in front of a group of teenage girls, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. um, Parker asked a really good question. So he says, how does it feel to be on the oh. other end of the spectrum, Gavin? He's referring to a story that when I was a scare actor at Halloween Horror Nights, I scared a coworker of mine. She didn't know I was, uh, for the season, working in one of the haunted houses with Saws and Steam over in the Jaws queue. And she didn't know I was working that event. And I saw, I saw her and said her name and she literally wet herself, I found out months later. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah. she had to, she yeah, had, I'm not gonna mention her name. I'm not that mean, I'm not gonna say her name right now, but she wet herself and had to uh, exit the house early, use the emergency exit and go clean herself up because Sorry, I had to close yeah, um, she she was not expecting someone to know her name. So it is kind of creepy, but I didn't get that. Now she's gonna watch this and now she'll be so embarrassed. Here's the thing. I hear that Gavin. Oh my gosh. She doesn't she didn't know that I was gonna be working in there. We you know, when someone says my name, obviously they, <laughs> And Michelle <it's>... said <laughs> that's so cool, but didn't it give you nightmares, Patrick? Absolutely it did. Did last, night, nightmares last night? I did have nightmares last night. Last night was the first time I got some good sleep. I've not been sleeping very well lately. Oh no, I yeah, no, it definitely gave me nightmares. Oh, it's I don't know, it's like a different feeling when someone comes up to you and just knows your name and they like whisper ah. into your ear, it's creepy. And there's Pepper. She doesn't like even hear her. She's she's, she's barking upset. Back there. She's upset. She doesn't like talking about the She Halloween just stuff. loves attention. So if she's not getting attention from us, she goes into her crate, which she feels safe in, and she just barks for barking. us to come get her. Oh, see there she, she goes. She gets so she upset. wants to know what's going on. Oh my gosh, she's she's an old girl. Okay, old. so Jenny says, what is the most scariest house out of all haunted attractions you've ever been through? Oh, I would have to say. Obviously, I love Halloween Horror Nights and I love Hollow Scream, but I would have to say Shallow Grave. Uh, that, that, yeah, <laughs> that was in Winter Haven. And this year was actually the very last year for Shallow Grave um, because they uh, are, this is the last year they're doing it, unfortunately. And uh, there was other things behind that story, but we don't have to go into it. But Shallow Grave was actually really scary. That um, Halloween event, you were, you were actually being touched throughout the house. And that's an experience in itself. <laughs> not inappropriately. Oh, not, not inappropriately. It's, no. well, it's, it's not, just like, you'll be walking in and they'll feet. just go like this. Yeah. Like they'll touch your, your shoulder like that out of nowhere and it's creepy. Yeah. But yeah, shallow grave for sure. It was cool and it was, it was just, uh, she came over here so I don't know if you said this, but it's just like groups of six, maximum six oh, people. Yeah. The maximum is six people at a time. So they really do a pulse for this thing. And so you, you could be waiting a while, but it's kind of like worth the wait where you could be going in there. But also yeah. the house itself for Shallow Grave, Lasts. it's like a 25 minute house, mm -hmm. like 20, 25 minute. So it's not just a, you know, oh, you're waiting an hour for like a two minute attraction where you're just walking through and you're out. Yeah. No, you're, if you're in there for like a good 20, 25 minutes going through this huge, huge house. Yep. Woo. Terrifying. So Undertaker Punk says, does um, Hallow Scream still do the Alone House or something mm. similar to it? Now this is something I've heard of. I didn't know that Hallow Scream did this, but this is something that a lot of people have always talked about, you know, wanting to be seen over at um, Halloween Horror Nights. And they just, I don't think they have the space for it. I think that it's kind of, I don't know if there's that much of a demand for it, but it's something that's really interesting to go in by yourself. You know, I rather had seen them do the Alone House at Hall um, Halloween Horror Nights instead of the VR house they did last year. Remember that? I don't feel oh, like that was yeah. very successful for them just because it was it was really cool acting and immersive, but it was quick and it was the VR wasn't that great of quality. But I wish they used that space for something like an Alone House, you know, and you pay an extra cost that way you're not having to worry about lines. O O Fam Adventures wants to know which is the scariest house for us mm -hmm. um, at Halloween Horror Nights and which one was the scariest house over at Hollow Scream? For, well, for me, I, I can answer that easily. Um, at Halloween Horror Nights, it was the, uh, the Scarecrow Reaping, Reaping, yeah. uh, Reaping yep. Scarecrow. Ooh, I know I'm gonna get called out on that. But the Scarecrow House, mm -hmm. that was terrifying. I literally was crying. I had tears coming out of my eyes. But, so that would be Halloween Horror Nights and Hollow Scream. Uh, for the house, I would have to say I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed um, their new house that they had. Uh, the, oh, 
boy. Dimensions, Dimensions or no, undead, the undead, undead Live? The Undead Live one. Mm-hmm. That one was, I really liked that. Because they had a lot of, it was kind of like, I don't want to throw any shade. I don't want to throw any shade. But it was kind of like the run house at Halloween Horror Nights. Was it two years ago? Yeah, two That's years beautiful. ago. Um, it was kind of like that, but just better executed. Ooh, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate it's for that. okay. But like, I, I feel like it was better executed because it was just, it made more sense. Executed better. Yeah. Well, I think that's the... Oh, okay. Executed. That's what I meant. But um, yeah, it just, it was just, yeah. The okay. sets were just, it made sense. What's really interesting is that an Undead Live, the first room you go into, there are three different doorways. And there is a performer there, a scary performer, that will separate your group. It doesn't <gasps> touch you, oh. but tries to separate you. So oh, honey. there were two oh, girls no, with no. us, and they went through a different door, and it was me and him together. But the guy almost separated Patrick and I. The guy looked at both of us, because it was only four of us that went in at, at, the, at the time. And the two girls got separated and went into two doors. And then the guy looked at us, and he... Pointed one direction for Gavin and one direction for me. And I said, <laughs> oh, baby, you don't know who I am. I said, Gavin, come with me. I was like, that's not going to happen. And then the guy is like stamping his, like stomping his feet and like pointing over there. And I was like, no, 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 honey. I'm sorry. We don't, we don't work like that. We don't do that, honey. We don't do it. And I was like, come on, Gavin. We got to go. We got to get to this, to this house. So <laughs> it was really interesting. I'm trying to read the questions. I know we got a lot coming in. Um, in your experience as a scare actor, have you ever been hit by guests going through? Mm. I had that experience last week, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, Parker, that you had that experience. It's never fun. Mm. But um, if you work for a reputable um, haunted attraction, when we worked at Halloween Horror Nights, there are lots of uh, security personnel and lots of Orlando Police Department uh, or police officers uh, there at the end of the house. So if that happens to you, you go and they take care of the guests and get them kicked out. But I did have that my first uh, first week when I was doing Saws and Steam back in the day, uh, Jaws, the Jaws queue, and this teenager poked my eyes and like purposely went and tried to poke me. Uh, oh. So I just went through a backstage area and met him at the end. He walks out, you just point him out and say, get him kicked out. And they ask you, do you want to press charges? Which oh. is kind of cool. Cause but I didn't want to do that because then if you press charges, you're going into court against this person. Not on, you know, Universal's not there supporting you. You're kind of doing it on your own. But yeah, it, it happens. It's you know, it's crazy. Uh, alcohol and scares don't mix. Yeah, Mrs. Walt Disney World fan um, asked. Well, no, she said that she heard that Shallow Grave was moving locations next year. Mm-hmm. I I didn't know that. I thought it was just They're combining done. and moving locations. I think. Oh, it's I still thought they be, were yeah. done. No, I well, think. Well, that's even better. So. Check out Shallow How can they just give all that up? That is a good product. Well, I mean, it's I heard there was cool. like a long story. I oh. read into it, but I don't know. But um, but yeah, I hope it's coming back next year in just a different location. Um, what else? What else? What else? Miss Walt Disney World fan, yes. If you haven't, everyone, if you want, don't know what Shallow Grave is and want to know, uh, go to the Tim Tracker's uh, blog. He vlogged it with Jen, and you'll you'll see you'll see it. It's intense. It's so, intense. So, uh, question, uh, does Hollow Scream have a signature drink? Banana Peel asked that, uh, because mm. Halloween Horror Nights is known for their alcoholic beverages, uh, and lots of it to go around, and this event does serve alcohol, but I feel like it's not as much, but I don't see anything on here. I know that they have specialty bars set up for the event, but I don't see, hold on, enjoy a full selection of ice cold beer, mixed drinks, and thirst-quenching refreshments, plus this year's themed drinks. There are themed drinks. Here we go. Zombie juice and embalming fluid. Ooh, ooh! I want it. Oh man, that sounds delicious. I'm so mad! I want an <laughs> embalming fluid. Come on, that's a cool name. I love that. That's neat. <laughs> oh, that's gross. That's cool. Yeah, that's a gross. Oh, Pepper blends in with the couch. Yeah, she's uh, so dark. Yeah. I know there's a shadow right here, so you can't even see Pepper really. I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't know she was here. I went like this, and I accidentally elbowed her. Poor little girl. Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? What uh, else? Okay, Parker, you work at uh, it's more of a community haunted house, but it's, okay. It's part but of you still know, you yeah. still get it. I think Whereas. I almost got hit when I was working Halloween Horror Nights. Um, that was the twenty fifth year, but um, I ducked down. But when I did, I fell back. <laughs> Leave it to me. I'm so clumsy. I shouldn't be doing anything because I'm just the clumsiest person. But the guy went to swing, and I went back, and I fell, and actually hurt myself by doing that. 
So, <laughs> while we have your attention, just in case you're not able to stay with us for the entire Monday fun day, we're almost oh, halfway through. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we usually do our vlogs on Thursdays, but since tomorrow is Halloween, Ooh. and we went to Hallow Scream last night, of course we vlogged it, you guys. Of we, course! We vlogged our adventures at Hallow Scream, and we're going to put it out tomorrow. So, our vlog this week will be coming up tomorrow. So, that's kind of cool. Yes, um, our, our Halloween. Hollow Scream vlog will come out tomorrow in celebration of Halloween. It's gonna be great. Jenny asks, completely change the subject, what time is it there? It right is now. 6 26. 6 26 p.m. PM. PM. Yes. No, it's AM. <laughs> so I look I'm a good I'm a morning guy. Morning person. You're a mess. I am a mess. You are a mess with a capital M. They have a sampler lanyard at Bush Gardens Hollow Scream starting at $30. That's interesting. So oh oh, I wanna talk about so let's go into like the actual houses. Yeah, I was gonna talk about that. Yeah, First, let's do the... let's do a little break. So we'll have our we'll, we just talked about the scare zones, and then let's talk about fiends, and then oh, let's go fiends. into the houses. Yes, fiends. So fiends. The last show was at midnight. We saw the second to last show at eleven o'clock. Fiends has a new location this year. If you guys have been in the past, uh, last year when we saw it, we did the dinner package thing and saw it uh, over at the. Fire. What was it called? It's, fire. It's in Pantopia. Fire grill. Fire grill. Fire, fire, fire dragon. Grill. Dragon. Oh my we gosh, we are a mess. So as you can see, we don't go to Bush Gardens that often. Dragon Fire Grill, there y'all. Is. Dragon there Fire is. Grill. So it's usually over there, um, but they have a new show this year. We didn't see that, though. But um, Fiends was moved over to the, what's it called? The Stanleyville? Yeah, Stanleyville yeah. Theater. And it's it's interesting. It's, it's kind of like a pop culture reference. It's, you know, same format as Bill and Ted, but instead of having that IP, they use uh, Frank, Frankenstein. So not Frankenstein. Or Frank... Freak, Freakenstein. Freak, Freakenstein. Freakenstein. Yeah, Doctor Freakenstein. Freakenstein. Um, and then his what's his sidekick's name? Igor. 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 And it's very adult, like humor. It's, it's like it's it, like it's yeah. like a Bill and Ted. Yeah. It's like it's, a Bill and Ted at Halloween Horror Nights, mm -hmm. and it's um. I thought it was actually funny this year. It was funny. Last year we were like, oh. Last year we were like, it was oh, different. Okay. Yeah, it was it's different. different. It's hard to follow but along, but this year was great. This year I thought it was great. I think. Having it in an actual theater mm -hmm. makes it that much yes. better. It helps. It helps so much because then you have everyone's attention. Mm -hmm. Because at the theater that it was in before, it was well, it was a restaurant. Yeah. And so people were they were eating and people were coming in and out with food and it smelled of food. And um, as a performer, would that be hard for you? Oh, it's totally distracting. Isn't that it's I can't totally imagine. distracting? I can't well, because I mean, you hear like you know, oh, plank, I don't, do don't do it with the dog. I don't do she it. She freaks yeah. out. You plank glass together. Yeah. So, but so, it's like hearing the clinking of the glasses and the silverware. And people are talking, people talking, and it's it's totally distracting. So, I mean, I give props for any performer that performs in that restaurant. Yeah. But it was a it was a decent show. Where the difference is, I want so you guys can know what we're talking about because it's not exactly the same like Bill and Ted. It's uh, it's been going on since the beginning. This event's been going on for seventeen years now. It's one of the facts that they played on the screen before the the show began, and it's more dancing uh, and music. And it's not just new music that came out this year, but it's also like older songs. I don't want to say the word old because you know uh, songs from the sixties really aren't old. They're just classic, classic songs. But it's interesting. It's a good mix of music. But it's more dancing and less. There's references and jokes to people in pop culture, but you're not seeing them. Bill and Ted, it's constantly wham every second. Stage oh, left, yeah. stage right. You have a different performer coming out that's impersonating a, a, a famous person from this past year, a film or TV show icon, and they get off the stage real quick. Where here, it's just they talk about them, but not show them. It's more just dancing with the classic monsters, with well, their own version. The guys are shirtless. They're good looking. The girls are pretty. They're good looking. It's it's eye candy everywhere. <laughs> Change the subject really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Caleb wants to know if the leaves are changing over here in Florida. Ha! Huh. No. The only, I mean, I don't, it sounds awful, but the only leaves that are changing are the dead leaves of the trees that are still fallen from Irma. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been here my whole life in Orlando, and I have never really seen fall. I have never seen fall. I've never seen snow. And I've never seen fall colors, like leaves changing like that. It just doesn't happen here like it does up north in other areas of the country. So that's something I really want to do. Maybe we can take, I don't know, we got to find something. I want to go up north just to see that. Undertaker Punk, the Fiend Girls are iconic to Hollow Scream in his opinion. I, I, I would agree. I, I would agree. I would agree. 
Definitely. Their hats those, are the logo. Those fin girls, I mean, they could get it. They were just, I was like, every time they danced, I was like, yes, you go ahead. You, you kick your leg. It was good. It was a good show. Yeah. I, I thoroughly was impressed. We almost didn't even see it, to be honest. We were just kind of like, last year, we just were like, oh, okay. But I said, we, we finished the house, as you guys. We started exactly 7.30, our first, because we got we were in the park. I want to go back to that as well um, when we start talking about the houses. But we got started at 7.30, finished by 10.30, and the park was open till 1 a.m. And so we saw the 11 o'clock show, and then we left early. We left at midnight. Midnight. We so left. it was great. Beat the traffic. It Because I, when we got there... We started in the back, mm -hmm. and then yep. we worked all the way to the front. And I think that's the best way to do it because we got to do everything. But like it was around eleven, well, no, like ten ish, mm -hmm. ten ten thirty, and we were looking at the lines, and the lines were getting pretty long. So I, I'm I'm glad that we were able to do everything because obviously last night was last night, and I would have been crushed if we didn't get to do anything. Yeah. So I'm glad that we were able to. But what we did is, so here's what happened. This is another difference between Hollow Scream and Halloween Horror Nights. So Halloween Horror Nights, if you, the event starts at like six or 6.30, and or it's 6.30 technically, um, but if you're in the park and you have a daytime ticket, you can go into the park anytime up until five o'clock. And if you're in at 4.59, you're in, you're in the park, and they're gonna kick you out once the park closes to day guests. But they have three different like holding areas, three or four depending on the year. And you can go to a holding area. There's turnstile team members there with portable turnstiles that scan your ticket, and you can stay in this holding area. You have to stay in the holding area, though. So it's kind of packed at times, really packed with people. They'll have a bar. They'll have restrooms for you, but that's it. Um, and the rest of the park, they clear everyone out, and the park is clear of guests except in these holding areas. And then at 6 o'clock, you get a head start to the houses, and then everyone else at the gates comes in at 6.30. Hallow Scream is different. I like this setup. If you're in the park, you just go over to Falcon's Fury or by... Um, I almost said Shakira, no, Shikra, <laughs> and you go over there and you just show your ticket and they'll just give you a wristband. It's kind of like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And so you have the wristband on and you can just walk around the park wherever you want to go um, from 6 to 7.30 and you just walk around and they're not, they're just going to check this, but they're not going to kick you out. So you can just roam around. You have space. You're not crowded in a pen with other guests, which is nice. So oh my we got to line up. Jenny said that when she went to... When she lived in Florida, she used to go to Hollow Scream the preview weekend, and uh, you had to go, you had to be held in like the Falcon's Fury area, like he wow. was just talking about. And she would ride Scorpion and Sandstorm. They over still do over. that. They still do that. But it's not, you, you don't have to just stay in that area that. though. It's now called Pantopia. And Pantopia is where they have some of the attractions still running, but we don't care for those attractions. So yes. we just kind of sat, had a cup of coffee to kind of warm up. Uh, he got some really they have a good pretzels shop over there in Pantopia. But oh, yeah. yeah, we just had some snacks to get some fuel in the system for all the scares. And it was great. And then we were literally in the first house, the newest house, the De Demented Dimensions uh, at 730. Mm -hmm. And we got four houses done within an hour. Mm -hmm. And then we finished all seven houses by 1030. It was great. It was great. It was not crowded. The cr and it was just fun. It was nice. Yeah, I the love the house. The weather the houses, helps. Yeah, the weather helps, obviously. Mm -hmm. It was cold. So let's talk about So it was nice. But the houses were on point. I, I, I thought they were. I loved, enjoyed the houses. And you think it's the last night. They're getting closer and closer to the end. They're literally just hours away from after working. I think this event went on for like 19 nights. And you think that they're gonna be out of energy. They're not gonna be giving it their all, even though, you know, a good performer always does that. But you know, we're people, we're human. It's repetitive stuff. It's really repetitive. And you're dealing with a lot of different clientele. You know, people react differently to scares and it can get annoying at times. So it's, um, it's cool that they really went all out. The performers were on point. And I feel like it, even in the houses, it, it was better. And I said, we were in the line for, I think, Unearthed. And I said, Patrick, we're always gonna come back to this event the last weekend. Like we're gonna do this on the last night, depending on you know when Halloween is, but because it was not crowded, the weather was great, and I felt like they were just really having a good time, and, and it scared us. So yeah, Mrs. Walt Disney World fan, we did not ride any coasters no. this time around. We were we were going to. Shakira, Shakira. We were gonna uh, ride. Oh, what was it? Cheetah Hunt and Cobra's Curse. Cobra's Curse are the two coasters but really that all were, we do. They had a long wait, so we're just like, nah. We can come back we during the day. Come, yeah, we can come back during the day. So. We'll, we'll we'll ride them. Um, but we didn't. Um, I also, I wanted to say, I don't know if, I, I know there's a few of you that have gone to this event, to Hollow Scream, multiple years. So correct me if I'm wrong, but 
but I feel like um, this year was the first year for uh, in the scare zones, the scare actors sliding on their oh, knees. Yes. I know over at uh, Not Scary Farm in California and other Cedar Park. And yeah, yeah, I know I know that they had scare actors that will slide on their knees across the scare zones and it will create sparks. I saw that last night and I was just like, all right. I think right. I might have you on camera right. saying, welcome to the East Coast I said I was like, ooh, welcome to the East Coast sliders. <laughs> it was cool. It was so good. I can't tell you that this, this year was just so amazing and I cannot wait for next year. So um, we had Parker ask a really good question. Do the scare zones at HHN and Hello Scream do a good job at scaring me? My experiences with scare zones here tend to be more scene focused and I don't get as many scares. It, it is, you know, it's something I feel like it depends on the zone. I feel like Alan Hornets is definitely a lot of scene. There's a big focus on scenes and, and noise and sound effects and the music. Uh, the scare actors are, just depends on the zone, how they're populated. The purge scares on that I was in and this year, it's heavily populated. So there are good scares, even though there's still a lot going on. There's a lot of detail, which is good. Um, but there have been years where it's just, it's not because just the traffic flow over in the San Francisco area where it's, it's hard to have scares. It's become more of a photo op area scare zone instead of actual scares, but it's just hard because it, it, it's, they can't help it. It's just the space that they have there. But I felt like Hollow Scream um, definitely had more focus this year on sets, but oh, yeah. they did not lack in the scares. We Ooh. were getting scares, you guys. It was good. Oh, and goodness. it takes a lot for me to get scared, but you'll hear in our vlog tomorrow, I'll be behind the camera, you'll hear me jumping and making funny oh, noises. Oh my gosh. Maybe cursing once or twice. I, yeah. it, I can't. I can't. They had Mr. Walt Disney World, the flying dude in the scare zone will get you. Yep. Yes, they have people on bungees and they're like in the bushes and they will, when you're walking across, they'll bungee out, scare you, and then it takes them back into the bushes. We stood and we, we were those people. We stood and watched the scare like, not for very not long. For very long. Maybe like two couple, minutes. It's a couple minutes. Yeah. But there is this one family, they were walking and they walked right in front of him. The guy bungeed out, scared the guy to the point where he like had his hands up in the air and he just, Took off. Took off. He did not stop. And he and everyone was just laughing at him. I thought at one point when he started running, I was like, this is fake. I was like, he was put in here to like get scared because right. it was that like exaggerated. But I mean it was it was real. It was real. He was terrified. And those things were terrifying. So Undertaker Punk, uh, thoughts on the DJs at Hello Scream. Oh. Uh, I only saw one DJ area. But there is one inside no, the yeah. queue that's or over by the Serengeti over yeah. the pub by Cheetah. But we didn't go over in that area just because that pathway is closed off during the event. But yes, there are DJs there. I really, uh, we didn't spend a lot of time there. When we walked by over in Stanleyville by the Fiend show for the theaters there, there was, he was playing the Time Warp. And people were and Everyone was playing. dancing. It was yeah, cool. Yeah, they were dancing. Yeah, in past years, I think the first year we went, there was a really good shish kebab. Uh, of course, um, it goes back to food for us. But we were over there, the DJ's next to the shish kebab tent, and we're getting food. And I was like, oh, there's a DJ here. But there was really no participation by guests. But, you know, it's fun. It kind of, the whole, the music playing throughout the entire park was very, like, club-esque. Oh, oh I loved it. <laughs> what? That thing just dropped. Oh, my <laughs> so, I knew that was going to happen, too. I knew that was going to happen. So, um, yeah, the music inside the park Ooh. while you're walking, it's it's scary, but it's, it's just more like it's club-esque, and it, it's fun. It just gets you in a good mood. It's really cool. You don't have to have gory, weird, demonic-sounding music to get scared. It, it still was fun. Um, uh, park, Jen, oh, sorry, go ahead. The park itself is scary at night, you guys. If you haven't been to Bush Gardens, it's huge. And it's not like a, a circle like the Magic Kingdom of it is. There's lots of different pathways. Um, so if you are not, if you don't go a lot there, it can be very confusing your first couple of times. But at night, the park is just naturally dark and lots of trees. So it's it's creepy. They don't have to do a lot of decor for that to be scary. Uh, so, Jenny wants to know if the Scare Zone uh, Vamp 55 was as scary as everyone said it was because when she saw a video of it, um, it didn't seem as scary, more as just as oh, visually, appealing. visually appealing. Yeah. Um, For me, it was more visually appealing than scary. Yeah. 
I would say more visually appealing. Um, I think it, it had to be that right performer. I remember, because this, uh, this is, Band 55 was a scare zone at Halloween, uh, Halloween Horror Nights last year um, on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, I remember one performer that had the ice cream, what was it, ice cream cart? Oh yeah, some cart. Yeah, that he was, was scared. I remember I, I jumped because he would s slam it. And it would make a loud bang, and obviously it scared me. But um, yeah, I would say it was more visually appealing, but it was still, I mean, Fan 55, I, I a, loved it. It was a good that scare was zone. Good. That was a great Good scare music. Zone. It was really good music. <laughs> it was, it was really um, good. I love classic music like that from the 50s and stuff, so that was really cool. Um, real quick shout out to Skylar. Hello, Skylar. Thank you for making Hello, it this week. Hello, Skylar. Glad you're here. Uh, Parker wants to know if the animals at Bush Gardens um, were they on display at night? No. No. The only animals that we did see elephant. at night was one elephant. Other than that, they were all gone. They were all put away. Put away. Taking a nap or taking. They were taking. No, they were sleeping. Sleeping for the sleeping. night. I it was say. too scary for them. Getting some shut eye. They didn't want to get scared. Mm -hmm. Zombies mm -hmm. scare them. So, Zombies scare. Yeah. Zombies scare me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. I don't take a I think parks. And, uh, need visual appealing stuff in between the scary parts to give some of the guests a break. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of guests that go to these events and they don't get scared. They're just that person that they, it takes a lot to get them scared. So really there are guys, I mean, being a scare actor, I did three different years. Um, you just can't get a scare out of them and you try. Like I'd follow them down the street and just try every which way, get different performers to come over and try to scare them. Chainsaws, we would do the whole nine yards and just couldn't get them to, to get scared. So, but why are they going? Because there's something there for everyone. It's the, you have either the live entertainment and they, or they like the music, the DJs, the food, the drinks, um, but also I think visually appealing. There are people that go that just love the atmosphere and maybe to people watch. So yeah, it's true. I think it's important. It doesn't, you don't have to have a scare zone have to be scary. It mm -hmm. could just be visually appealing and cool to look at. Because I know, because yeah. we were talking, we were in line for, I think, Unearthed, and we were talking to these two guys that were, I don't even know, what, how old they were, but they were older than us, but they were huge fans of Hollow Scream. And they were telling us like mm -hmm. stories when it first started and like what the scares were. It was so cool. So I actually, I love that, that a lot of the hardcore fans from when the event started 17 years ago, you know, still go to the event and just go, oh yeah, this, you know, they used to do this and, you know, they used to have them crawling over here and the blood squirting over there. and. So it was interesting to hear, it's you know, cool. things from years past. I wish I was older for that reason alone, <laughs> just so I could go to these events and see them evolve. Halloween Horrors has evolved so much, and it has changed a lot, and there's a lot of people that feel like it's, it used to be better, and they have stories where you hear these stories, and you're like, oh my gosh, they got away with that? They did that? Mm -hmm. So I heard a lot of that when I was a scare actor, when I worked with these, these seasoned pros that did it, or have done it for years. Samantha, good morning. Yeah, good morning from Australia. Happy Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. It's Halloween already over there, Samantha. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Woo. Do they say mate over there? Is that, is that Australia? Yeah, mate, right? Uh, yeah. Happy Halloween, mate. Uh, Mrs. Walt Disney World fan, uh, it takes a lot for Tim Tracker to get scared, but he has fun. He does have fun. Yeah, he does yeah. have fun. And I <laughs> I will never forget when we saw when we saw them for the first time, it was what, two years ago, right? Right. And we were, I don't remember what house it was. But we were it was going, one of the sound stages. Once in the sound stages, and we were leaving the house, and we saw them in front of us vlogging, and we're in their vlog, and you could see us in the back going, like whispering to each other because we were school girls. like little school girls going, oh my gosh, that's Tim and Jen, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and yeah, that oh, was funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Wait, there was one I want to say. Oh, Bill and Ted show. Can't believe they're leaving. Yeah, I Bill, know. I mean, what do you guys think they're gonna do with Bill and Ted going away? I don't know. It's it's interesting. I I don't think that fear. A lot of people are like, oh, they're gonna tear tear down Fear Factor, that that theater, I should say. Um, but I think it's staying put. I think it's just that Universal did not want to uh, pay so much money for this this new frame the new franchise that they're rebooting. The Bill and Ted franchise, that intellectual property is getting a reboot in films, and I think that's going to bring the cost up. And I think Universal's like, it's not, no, it's not worth it. So I think they're going to probably create maybe their own original concept, which could be cool if mm -hmm. if um, creative really gets back involved with HHN. Because a lot a lot of people say that mm -hmm. HHN has been changed and taken over by the marketing division of 
of Universal. Uh, creative, not so much. So I think maybe to hopefully get back in there and this show, the replacement, will be really cool. Banana Peel wants to know if uh, either one of us went to Halloween Horror Nights when the event was in both parks nope. over at Islands of Adventure. I wish. I wish, but no. I wish. Nope, we did not go. I, I, I've heard stories and I've watched YouTube videos. Like they had, what was it, a scare zone for Jurassic Park yeah. in Islands of Adventure. A scare zone where you like walk through the, um, was it, oh my gosh, the, uh, the tri tri Triceratops Encounter. Yes, you would walk That's through there. The old and, Triceratops. Yeah, the old Triceratops. Triceratops. Triceratops Encounter. Thank you. Triceratops Encounter. And or they had like, chill. different I, dinosaurs and people that were like morphed into dinosaurs. It was yeah, interesting. Go on YouTube. They have that. Yeah, it's on YouTube also. <laughs> um, they had, a, a, you would go through a cornfield. There's a cornfield scare um, zone maze between, you would exit over by Seuss Landing and go back backstage by, uh, between the sound stages back over to USF. Now, everyone always makes a joke now because. Bye, Parker. Sorry. Bye, Parker. Um, but every time HHN has done something with a, a scarecrow maze or a corn maze, a hurricane has come to Florida right before the event or yeah. during the event. The, Isn't that crazy? The maze that was backstage or back of house, as they say, Universal, um, was not destroyed, but a lot of the stuff was uprooted and it was kind of, it was not as good as they wanted it to be because a hurricane came right through. Um, and they spent so much time growing, literally growing. They just planted there. They grew the corn husks and corn, whatever you call it, the corn plants. But ironically, yeah. we had the Scarecrow house this, this year, year and, and then we had Irma. Irma. Yep. So I'm telling you. So I think Universal is going to stop with these. It's an omen. Yeah. It's an omen. Don't you... Don't do corn uh, mazes, y'all. Skyler wants to know if we saw Adam the Roo go through the Triceratops encounter after it was closed. We did see that. Yes, we did. We did see it. Yeah. I'm a huge theme park nerd. I love the thought of abandoned attractions. That's one of my, just, I love it. Um, I've never uh, been brave enough to go in areas like that and see it for myself. Actually, I did do that once. I did do that. But I was working at Universal at the time. So I did go back there one day when I was um, working and uh, put my head in there and saw some cool stuff, similar to what you saw on his video. But, you know, you just, we don't condone that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's still... It, it's still pretty cool. It's still cool. <laughs> it's, it's still, still pretty cool. cool to see what's It's still cool. <laughs> and we love Abu. We love Abu <laughs> so much. We watch his video. Well, we watch his videos. He's not vlogging right now, but that's totally okay. And uh, But totally flipped out when we saw him oh on uh, Tim and Jen's vlog. Oh yes. my gosh. Anytime we see him on other people's vlogs, because he's not vlogging anymore, it's just oh like this little, this little treat, this little nugget. You're like, oh my <laughs> gosh, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> hey, you just want to you know, say hello to him. But I've seen him in person, I think, twice. And one time I did, I was on the clock and I was selling express passes during Halloween Horror Nights and he came in and I was just like, I was like, hi Adam, love your videos. Like, thanks man. And that was it, you know, I was like, okay, gotta do it. Ooh, Tina wants to know, if we built a Halloween attraction, what would you do to make it scary? I, for me, I would make it as realistic as possible. So I, I, I don't think I would do like the loud, loud music like Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. I would make it, you know... More like they're talking to you, saying creepy things. Yeah. And opposed to saying, like... Opposed to, like, having ghosts in the attraction, I would do something that's, you know... Like... Like an actual killer. Oh, God. I don't like talking about this. What's scarier than a ghost? A killer? Well, like a real person. Like, like Michael Myers? Like the purge. The purge scares me, even though that's not really, like... Well, I guess it is supposed it, to be a scary movie. It's a but, scary like, movie. But, like, the purge scares yeah. the... I can't even say the word, but the it's word realistic. scares me because it's so realistic because that could happen. And so like, that's the way I would put my haunted attraction is something that could possibly happen because that's what's going to be scary. Um, I would make sure if I had a haunted attraction somehow when people are buying their tickets to get their name and be able to figure out some way to make sure performers know like maybe have screens behind the Googles or something where guests can't see. But that way as guests are coming through... We have a way of no, having the performer know, have a picture of them, you know, the guests with their names, so that way they know and can say their name. Um, also, allow touching, you know, to a certain extent, you know, arms, legs, things like that. Not anything inappropriate or aggressive, but I think that kind of freaks me out. Touching and um, just someone knowing your name, that's kind of Skylar said it best, though. Mm -hmm. For me, birds. 
Birds, yeah. Birds. Woo! For you, it would oh be my birds. Gosh. Hold on, I haven't been reading this because I know you have, though. Right. Have we... Uh, let's see here. Sa- yeah. Samantha asked, if we wanted to try an Aussie food, what would it be? I don't know. I don't is. know. Um, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I do know, actually. It's, uh, oh, what's it called? It, it looks like it... Yes. Like it's like a spread. And if you put it on, like, toast... Oh, what's it called? Samantha, help me out. Um, it might be like brown or black in color. Oh, um, uh, oh, a Vegemite. Yes, Vegemite? yes, Vegemite? Yeah. that's what it's called. I've heard it's Thank gross. Thank you, Caleb. I've heard it's gross. But I want to try it. I, everyone tries it. I want to try it. Um, I want to know this, Samantha. So we have Outback Steakhouse here in the uh, states. America has something called Outback Steakhouse. Okay. Apparently. Um, supposed to be food like in Australia and the commercials has the Australian accent guy talking and uh, you go there and you get these blooming onions is that really a big thing over there is blooming onions really a big thing there oh, yes. is that just something that they created for Outback Seconds like oh yeah this is what Girl, Australians eat that, they just created that for the that's like the Olive Garden honey you're not gonna True. go you're not gonna go to Olive Garden and say oh it tastes just like I, when I was in Italy right Okay. True. I just want to know. I mean, but authentic, right? Undertaker Punk. Yeah, authentic. So what I want to know is like, are blooming onions over there very similar to the ones over here at the chain restaurants, um, or is it better because it's just done differently? How's it done differently? I should say. How's how's it done differently? Because I'm sure they have. Do you there. do you think though that they have Outback Steakhouse in Australia? I asked my friend who was from Australia in high school that, and I forget what he said. But I don't think they do have them. Well, let us know, Samantha. Samantha, let us know if there is Outback Steakhouse because I, I feel like she's typing this whole thing. I know. I'm saying like, you're so she's offensive like, right oh, now, you Americans. You are offending. Me. You guys, <laughs> just so you guys know, they're watching from overseas in America. We don't just eat hamburgers. Uh, we only eat that maybe six out of the seven days. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, yes, Miss Walt Disney World fans. I think Bloomin' Onions are Americanized. Probably. I like that word. Probably. Good word usage. Americanized. Oh my gosh. Pepper. I Pepper's can't. like a sleep. She just sighed. She was like, <sighs> She's like, is this done yet? She's so over this right She's now. Done. She, she <laughs> You can't even see her. Look, Samantha's She's gone. Like, we, we offended her. I know. Samantha's not <laughs> She's even She's like, I'm not responding She's to that. She's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of here. Oh <laughs> and Miss Waldy's more friends like, I don't like hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pepper's so sleepy I right know, now. Pepper's so sleepy. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Oh my gosh, Undertaker Pump. It's, it's probably just like Chinese fortune cookies. <laughs> I know, yep, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh Those fortunes, gosh. man. You get some for- fortune cookies these days. There's certain brands of fortune cookies that don't even give you a fortune. It just, what does it, it just, it says some weird stuff. You're like, this isn't a fortune. This isn't telling me what to look forward to. Or, I, don't know. I like it when it gives me like the lotto numbers, like my lucky numbers. Oh I never gosh. win. But they could but be lucky. Wait, Samantha someone said else. something. I should. Oh, Samantha or said I should. Wait. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, no. I think so. There is an Outback Steakhouse. Oh. Never been, but I should. <gasps> really? Oh, really? Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Samantha, don't go though. Don't go to it. Don't do it. No, it's for us. I love it. It's good. I'll tell you this, guys. If y'all are familiar with Outback Steakhouse, we went there on the day oh, yeah. after Irma. There was nothing open up yet. The curfew had just got lifted and like no restaurants were open, but all of them had a long line because they get people were thinking, oh, it's gonna open up soon. We went to this Outback Steakhouse over on International Drive, and usually that's like a nightmare. And there was a long line, like an hour long line, but his parents got there early and got a spot. So we arrived and we just got on to go up to the table. But because they couldn't have enough people to come in to serve tables, they just had enough people to cook back in the kitchen, and they made it an all-you-can-eat buffet. Buffet. Yes, we, Mrs. Walton Rochette, you had a buffet. That's right, girl. It was delicious. It was delicious. It was all-you-can-eat Outback Steakhouse. They had pork chop steak, uh, sirloin. They Ooh. had, uh, oh my gosh, quesadillas, oh my French gosh. fries, potatoes. You bet your it was bottom 18, dollar. It was $18. You know how much money it costs for you? Know, I was up at that buffet. It was good. It was so good. Every few minutes. It was so, so good. <laughs> so good. We ate earlier, so I'm not that hungry right now, thank goodness. I know. We went to um, the Ale House today. Yeah. You guys, I don't know if you guys probably don't have those, but Miller's 
Ale House mm -hmm. uh, is a chain here. I, I don't know if it's really nationwide. I think it might just be a Florida thing, but it's really good. They have something called the Zinger Mountain Melt. It's like Ooh. these really perfectly cooked chicken tenders that are just light and uh, fluffy, crispy, but um, it has all kinds of melted cheese on it. It has, what do you call it? Um, Fries um, has well no fries melted cheese, cheese but also green onions green onions and it's just so good. I was so like, good. I'm just laughing right. at Mrs. Walters, your world fan. She goes, "You rolled out of the outback, honey. No, they got a crane to lift me out of that restaurant, girl. They had to, they had a crane come pick me up and take me out. To we the opened car. up the sunroof and he just <laughs> and just went right into the car like that. Unhook me. <laughs> Lay off me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my That's god. That's such a good SNL skit though. What's Chris Farley? Lay Chris off Farley. me, I'm starving. Lay off me, I'm starving. Mm, these are good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Samantha, is ribs popular there? Ribs are very popular yes. here. Yes. I, I, wonder if it's, I wonder if it's prepared the same way, but I mean, there's so many different like uh, rubs you can do and sauces, but yeah, ribs are good. We have bar we have lots of barbecue places here in Florida, but it's not like the best oh, barbecue apparently. But Samantha said she went to Hurricanes, uh huh, which is based on American food. Yeah. And has pork ribs with special sorry, I'm trying to read that. I went to Hurricanes that. restaurant based based American food based had pork ribs, ribs with, with special, special sauce, sauce for my birthday. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. We've been to Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Recently we discovered that. I mean it's been around, but we uh, we went there not too long ago, a few months ago, and it was good. It was enjoyable. They had, so we got the uh, wings. It's really good, so. Real good. And they're like all franchised out, so we're on the website and I was like, oh my gosh, all these people, you can just open up your own hurricanes, just have your own restaurant, just okay. pay, them, pay them X amount of dollars and they give you everything you need to build a restaurant. Hello. Pretty cool. Kind of like a life-size adult version of Lego. Lego stuff. <laughs> Do my Legos, I'm building a restaurant. Oh my goodness. We're gonna serve food. There's one question that we didn't ask yet. What are you all, what are you guys doing tomorrow? Yeah. We got a few minutes left. If Let's you, talk about if this. If you guys are celebrating Halloween tomorrow, well, or Samantha today, uh, what do you guys plan on doing? Are you gonna, just, do you have work? Are you going to trick or treat? Are you going to... Do you guys leave the bowl out for the trick or treaters to just help themselves oh, yeah. and have that one kid that steals them all? Or do you <laughs> open the door and do a costume contest or judge the kids? And Michelle, she said she's working. Hey, gotta get that money. Yes. I saw something today I want to tell you guys about real quick. Um, I saw something on Facebook, this post that someone like reshared, and it was it was worded really well, and it makes so much sense. You know there are teenagers out there that still will trick or treat, and I did it up until I was like twenty, maybe even older than that. But I was I love it. I've always enjoyed it, and uh, I would always get the comments of. Aren't you a little too old to do this? Why are you still doing this? You know, and they make me feel bad about it. And like, why don't you just go buy your own candy? But someone said, "It's would you rather this teenager to be out doing drugs, vandalizing, doing things they shouldn't be doing instead of trick or treating? They're trick or treating. They're being a kid at heart. They're having fun. They're not causing trouble. You know, would you rather them be doing other things? Don't say that to them. Don't make them feel bad about them." You know, or about it. Just let them be kids at heart. You know, as long as you can be. So that was a good point. So I feel like I'll always remember that, and never. I would never say it to begin with, but after reading that today, I was like, never talk down to someone like that for doing something that makes them happy. You know, it's so true. Look at that. We got. Uh, and we we, Maya, end, we got Maya Angelou here. We we end. Not, we end going with through. some <laughs> deep thoughts <laughs> and deep reflection of the Halloween season. Oh my gosh. Undertaker <laughs> Punk said he stopped when he was 17. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Walt Disney World fan says she lives in the country, so no trick or treaters for you. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, girl. I'd be scared living in the country. Skylar said he's got school, but he's dressing up with some friends and then dinner. That's always a win. The dinner part, obviously. And obviously, friends. <laughs> um, Casey, she has work, but dressing up. Samantha, you're working today. Oh, but you're gonna do a, but you wanted to do a Halloween I mean a, a horror movie marathon oh. but Skyler asked if we have plans we're just gonna hang out here and give yeah. away candy if we have nature retreaters yeah um, we're gonna just watch some movies and relax and enjoy the evening enjoy the so, evening well, you can't get too rowdy I work the next day but yeah it, that's yeah. that's pretty much it but you'll see our blog over from hello scream in Bush Garden tomorrow. tomorrow. So no vlog Thursday, but we'll be having it out tomorrow. So you get a little. It'll be coming early oh, this week. And just to give you a heads up, y'all, 
just to give you a heads up, there might be a, a possible change in the schedule. Schedule. For the schedule. Schedule. Schedule for the vlog. Because normally we say it's going to come out on Thursday. It's going to come out on Thursday. But with his new work schedule, and we're just trying to get everything together, it's getting really difficult for us to do it actually on Thursday. Friday is a lot better for us because we're able to have a full day to just sit back, okay, what do we need to do? What's gotta get done? So it might get pushed forever to have it be released on Fridays. It's but, not official um, yet. It's not official yet, but, but I mean, happens. for the past couple weeks we've been doing that. It's been coming out on Fridays and that's why. It's just because work and everything has just been going, is absolutely insane right now. So Friday's just easier for us to put stuff out. But this week- Bye Samantha. Our, bye Samantha, thanks for tuning in, happy Halloween. Um, but this week our vlog is coming out tomorrow, tomorrow on Tuesday for Halloween and it's gonna be Hollow Scream and you get to watch us get scared. Okay, <laughs> oh, Vince in here. So, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Monday, yes. fun day. Make sure you follow us, Gavin and Patrick, on socials. And we will see you tomorrow. We hope you have a safe and really fun Halloween. We hope you enjoy mm -hmm. our video from our mm -hmm. time at Hallow Scream. And we hope that you enjoyed our little review. And we hope it helps you plan your future visit uh, for next year's event. And we hope you go because we really highly recommend it. Or we really highly recommend oh, it. I can't say it. <laughs> have a great Halloween, you have guys. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. And we will see you tomorrow with our vlog over at Hello Scream. Hello Scream. Happy Halloween, happy Halloween everyone. Guys. Thanks for joining us. Say bye, Pepper. Woo. <laughs>